Welcome to the AI for Interior Designers podcast, where creativity meets cutting edge technology. In each episode, we dive deep into the world of artificial intelligence and explore how it's revolutionizing the interior design industry. From AI powered design tools to the latest trends and innovations, we've got you covered. So plug in, relax, and let's embark on this exciting journey together. Welcome to AI for Interior Designers podcast. P.S. This intro was written by and voiced by AI to sound like your host, Jenna Goodusek. Hey there, designers. Welcome back for episode 28 of the AI for Interior Designers podcast. I am your host, Jenna Kaduzik, and today I have a guest with me, somebody that I met over the summer. We'll talk about uh, how <laughs> later on in the episode. But uh, Crystal McNaughton is my guest today, and I am so excited to speak with her because she has such an interesting perspective about AI, technology, community, and it's something that I have not really explored because she's been in a different pocket of the interior design industry. So very excited for today's conversation. Crystal, just a little background of her, where she comes from, what she does, but Crystal is an experienced people leader. She's currently in a tech startup where she's utilizing technology, AI, all of the things. Can't talk about it yet, but uh, she has been working in uh, the plumbing and construction industry for over 15 years. So she has a really diverse range of experience from marketing, sales operations, to the luxury plumbing heart and hardware store that she founded uh, in 2018 to 2024 in Toronto with her, uh, her decorative plumbing showroom that she created. So very different perspective from what I do in the interior design space and in the virtual space. But I, I just had to ask Crystal to join me um, after I met her this summer at AI panel, by the way. She, um, her sense of community. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me, Jenna. It's uh, really great to be here. Um, it's actually my first official ever podcast. Um, <laughs> and I've done, uh, I've done multiple webinars and speaking engagements, but not a podcast yet. So cool. I, uh, I love this. Cute. <laughs> so I have, uh, I've been in plumbing, like the plumbing industry for the majority of my career, um, from marketing to sales, uh, operations. Uh, I opened a, you know, kitchen and bath uh, plumbing studio in uh, downtown Toronto, which was a luxury high-end uh, plumbing studio. Um, so I have worked with interior designers for about seven of those years, but have also worked with mechanical contractors, plumbers, builders. Um, and yeah, I have just really been able to work in a variety of different capacities, but my, you know, kind of mainstay was that I was, you know, the plumbing girl and I was really passionate about plumbing. Um, I've recently uh, went to a tech startup. Uh, and so, you know, that's a crazy wild journey in itself. Um, I won't go too much into that. But, um, you know, the main reason being is that they were selling into our industry. And I'm really passionate about efficiency and, you know, how we can leverage technology in order to make our daily lives easier. Um, and so it just seemed like a really seamless, easy transition for me. Uh, we're a startup though, we're in stealth mode. So, um, so we pivoted a few times and uh, yeah, that's been a whole fun journey in itself. Yeah, okay. That's incredible. Like, see, that's why I couldn't even wrap all this up into an intro because there's so many cool components to uh, what you've done and that's led you to where you are today. So, okay, let's kind of dive into the tech side of these things. With your background in plumbing and, you know, every everything else that you just mentioned, where does technology and we'll get to AI, but where has this been like an underlying thread through everything that you've done? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I've worked for large corporations, but when I founded um, the business, I would say I really related to my customer base. Um, in working with interior designers, you know, solopreneurs, a majority of them running their own business um, uh, and oftentimes on their own, um, you know, having to get that business off the ground and do absolutely everything from social media, uh, you know, Every component, build the website, decide, you know, the whole business model had to be designed. Um, really leveraging technology in order to streamline those efficiencies. I, I laugh, like that would have been back in, I think, 2017 uh, mm -hmm. that that happened. I would have loved to leverage AI. Like, I just think how much time I had so much decision fatigue 
And mm-hmm. I can only imagine that uh, designers feel the same way and um, love to, you know, give advice on what they can do to help reduce mm-hmm. and mitigate against that. So this was when you were starting up your company in Toronto. Is that Yeah, right? I was. Yeah, it was part of okay. a larger organization. Um, okay. I built from the ground up. The, you know, the long story short was that we saw a gap in the Toronto market um, mm-hmm. and we saw that it was a bit of a different business model than the other businesses. So they had 300 locations across Canada, um, but we were going to open something different. So it didn't follow that standard business model. And, and I had the privilege and honor of being able to, to build it from the ground up. Okay. That's awesome. So if you had technology back then, uh, the AI tech that we have now, in what ways do you think that you could potentially be using it besides maybe social media and marketing and things? Yeah, yeah. So I think about business development and sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, we have to lead with on- like authenticity, genuineness, creativity. So an email that you get out of ChatGPT or a social media post campaign, like, you know, all of that that you get out of ChatGPT is fairly generic. And I know that you and I have also spoke about what you put in is what you get out. And, you know, prompt management is obviously very important, but it gets you 80% of the way there. And mm-hmm. I think back to, you know, documenting training guides for my team, scripts for outbound calling, but like we just had to build that all. Uh, yeah. and it was so time consuming and now mm-hmm. you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and people say, okay, well, that's great. That's a startup environment. What about, you know, when you're already up and running and we already have all that documentation. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the coolest uses I've seen is you're always like, say you're running a team and you're always going to have new people joining that onboarding schedule is so much faster now mm-hmm. because you yes. can actually just train you know, with all of that product knowledge, I hear everybody talking about institutionalized knowledge. <clears throat> and, you know, I, again, I startup environment, like speaking to the manufacturing mm-hmm. world, uh, the average lifespan of an employee was 35 years. It's down to okay. a year and a half. Wow. And so when, when you think about being able to institutionalize that knowledge and it not walk out the door when somebody leaves, somebody could just prompt and say, what's the answer to this? And it's there because it's built and it's retained. So. Yeah. Yeah, like selling plumbing, it was a really difficult product to sell. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it's a technically installed product. Mm -hmm. And so you need to train your team to be able to put together shower systems and make sure valves match the everything, you know, needs to align Mm -hmm. and match. And that's a that's a really hard thing to onboard new teammates to. It takes time. And so if we can accelerate that, I think it's great. Okay. Love that use case. My gears are turning, so I'm going to try and just think of one thought and have that one come out. <laughs> um, so found, um, okay, so do you build GPTs in ChatGPT? And is that maybe how you would do this to onboard new people, basically create a chat bot that's trained on maybe a specific task, maybe like just general knowledge and be able to like extract the answers when somebody asks that for onboarding. Is that one of the use cases? A hundred percent. I think it could be. Um, Of course, if you're using a paid version so that you Mm -hmm. ensure that your data stays internal to your, you know, Mm -hmm. company, Um, keeping in mind that um, I am no longer in the plumbing industry. And so I Mm -hmm. haven't been able to uh, put this use case into practice Mm -hmm. on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that there's also tons of companies out there that you could leverage um, to use, you know, out of box systems that might even be slightly better than ChatGPT, okay. GPT, or if you have mm-hmm. data and privacy concerns or, you know, sure. it's always better to do your, to do your research, but there's a ton of applications that are coming out. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest challenge that I hear is evaluating them. Mm, yes. <laughs> right? It's like, how do yeah. I know what to, uh, I think we talked previously about what call transcript like transcribers mm-hmm. that we use for our calls, yeah. right? And yeah, they're um, amazing. Mm-hmm. yeah, like what one do you use? Do you mind saying? So right now it's Fathom, but I also just got this new thing that my sister who is an attorney recommended to me and it's called Plod. So it is a note taker that connects to your phone or also just in the middle of a room, like an old school recorder. And it connects to the app 
which you can then transfer your conversation, you have to manually do it, to ChatGPT. So I always, you know, disclose and say you're being recorded or write it into a contract and, you know, just make sure that people know. But this is for in-person what I've been using. And then Zoom is Fathom. That's what I... That's amazing. What one is that called? The card? Uh, P-L-A-U-D. So like Claude. And it also connects to Claude, <laughs> Anthropic. So you have a different, you know, you have choices for where you export your transcripts, but transcripts are gold. So yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why it's for everything. <laughs> yeah, see, and that's, that's exactly it. I think, of course, uh, you have to acknowledge like, are people comfortable with it? But if, <laughs> if I look back to doing a sales consultation in a showroom, um, with a designer um, and more so less about the designer, more so with the designer and their client, right? Cause, um, I think oftentimes we, um, we need to hear the sediment and we don't do that as well as humans. Yeah. And I would love to record that entire consultation and then just transcribe it and say, okay, like what were the key insights? What were they most interested in? What didn't they like? And, and it gives, it also now is captured there. We all have bad memory. Mine's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we do so many consultations a day to be able to go back to those notes two weeks later when they're making revisions mm -hmm. would be incredibly valuable. Um, mm -hmm. So I just think that there's so many ways that we can, you know, make our processes mm -hmm. more efficient leveraging AI. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought up the note taker because I've done a whole episode on just Fathom and basically taking, you know, recordings and turning them into either blog posts or full client profiles where like I did miss things that they said when I was writing a note, which maybe I just shouldn't have been writing a note because it was, you know, recording it, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was there. But it it took things and that I literally took that transcript put it in chat GPT and said, okay, either create a summary of the project and then the next steps, or, um, you know, I took that and then I created a proposal with a, with a client that was about to become a client. So, you know, there's so many use cases, but like the words that you say when they're written down are now just, it's endless possibility for how you can repurpose that content. A silly, uh, silly little example is we had, a. Um what we call like a design partner um, that we're asking for insights into something that we're building. And uh, she happened to mention a book that she really liked. We were able, and we we're standing in chapters and we went back and like looked, we like searched the AI chat to be like, what book did she mention? Mm -hmm. And was able to get that as a gift um, cool. for her as a thank you. Right. And, cool. and we, if we just had to go based on our own memory, we could not recall mm -hmm. the name of that book for the life of us. Yeah. Um, but we were able to just ask quickly and it was right there. So yeah. Like what a enhancement to just human interaction, you know, just to be able to have this at our fingertips now, it's going to change a lot. It's going to make us so much more smarter. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not going to replace us like creativity. We're in such a creative, passionate space. Um, but it's about leveraging it where either we're weak um, and recognizing that or, or just to get 80% of the way there and then adding your own touch and spin on things and, and elevating it. So, but you have, you can then have more time to spend mm -hmm. on that creative process um, yeah. and, you know, the parts that you're really good at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, I understand that you understand that. I think a lot of more, a lot more designers are coming on board with AI and they're starting to see the benefits and not the replacement that, you know, people had said earlier and kind of caused fear with all this stuff that's coming around. So in the community setting, what's your perspective on like how we can move through this and be able to like adapt it and actually utilize it in a good way? Yeah. you. I, I'm going to actually just pull on that piece of community that you kind mm -hmm. of mentioned because um, a couple of things, I mean, not to go into COVID because like that's far enough in the past, right? Like we never sure. need to talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But right. Like I think our social circle shrunk during that time. And, yeah. uh, and then we kind of came out of that and now there's chat GPT. And one of the things I'm really passionate about is small businesses. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the common thread that has went through my career is, is that I've always been serving, uh, small businesses and, and really enjoy that. But, um, one of the things that I spoke to a leader about, um, coming out of COVID was how did you get through that as a small business owner? How, how did you get through that? And he in particular told me, well, I had people like other leaders that I spoke to. And it was like he was having these Zoom coffee chats um, with other leaders and they were they were sharing and exchanging. And so that sense of community was what got him through. I think about <laughs> I didn't have that. 
Mm-hmm. And I really uh, wished I had that. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's made me thought, a, like think a lot about community and how we intentionally spend our time. And I think uh, chat, BT, uh, chat GPT or any form of AI is really a personal um, tool as it is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very easy to just like put your head down into a computer and kind of like get all these things done and fast research, fast output. Mm-hmm. It's really that innovation and sense of community comes from like leaning outwards and um, and making sure that we're leaning into those communities because that's where new ideas and innovation yeah. comes from. So, yeah. Yeah. So just being really intentional about that. Absolutely. Okay. That totally makes sense. So we actually met and I, I didn't say this earlier, but we met this summer through a panel about AI uh, through uh, Decorative Plumbing and Hardware Association, which is a mouthful for me to remember. Um, so it exposed me to this whole other side of the industry and having conversations like with you and other guests that I have um, on the podcast, it just opens up the world, not only to AI, but like just different elements in design that, you know, we get so, like you said, heads down in our like tunnel that we don't really even consider all of these other elements that are coming into play. So creating communities that are all utilizing AI now almost brings these tech like stacks, you know, all these different things that we're trying to integrate together where we can be like, hey, how are you doing this? Can I eliminate this other technology because this one does it now? Um, And just having these conversations across the entire industry could potentially maybe make a one-stop shop one day for technology. So we're not using 10 bajillion different apps to do everything. So bringing everybody together in this technology a conversation is really interesting to me. And I think that AI is doing that for us because I I didn't even know about decorative plumbing and hardware until this summer, you know? So yeah. it's cool to see and then learn about your perspective. And now like you're getting in front of other designers and manufacturers and stuff that do listen to the podcast. So it's opening up that discussion for different use cases is kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> Absolutely. And and it's we have communities that we're just part of naturally today mm-hmm. and then it's being intentional i remember when i was younger um i went to almost every event i could imagine mm-hmm. and it was just like event 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 and nothing stuck right mm-hmm. and and now i go to less events and i'm very intentional about what i go to and it aligns with kind of my greater purpose and or it's just i enjoy it like mm-hmm. uh, one of your communities can be just something you're super passionate about you know, you're, you'd be part of a sailing club community because you just love sailing, but then you could be part of a workplace kind of community. You can be part of more of a creative community. And so, um, it's, it's just kind of figuring out, like, is there lacking something lacking that's going to help drive your business forward and then being intentional and not going to everything, but just maybe you have to, cause you have to check them out and see if they add value. But then taking a step back and saying, okay, yeah, I didn't get what I expected out of that. But maybe it takes time. Community Mm -hmm. takes time. So maybe the event or that association or that club or that whatever it is was really interesting. But the reason you didn't get a lot of value out of it is because you're not integrated into that community yet. And then Mm -hmm. you just have to put your time in. You have to earn your stripes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Decorative Hardware and Plumbing Association is a great community. Um, for sharing ideas specific to our industry. And so that's like a great example of one place that, you know, people can look at. But yeah. yeah. And one that I, I don't know that a lot of designers know about, to be honest with you. So I'm glad that we're telling them about yeah. it today. <laughs> well, and it's very specific to plumbing and hardware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so um, I, but I think they do great work together with designer oriented, like IDC and yeah. uh, NKBA and, mm-hmm. and stuff that maybe, you know, the designers would participate more in. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and hopefully that will happen because I mean, just that one panel in our, our pre-discussions, I learned so much from you guys and it was really cool to, you know, have that connection and the exposure um, to what you guys do because it helps us do our job better too. So yeah, that was a great conversation. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of wrap up today because we've covered a lot and this was so helpful because we haven't really discussed like the overall community aspect of it and, um, you know, just particular use cases. So if you had to choose maybe one technology that is emerging now, we're going to say emerging because nothing is great at this point, let's be honest, Um, we're getting there. But if you had to choose one thing for maybe 
what applies to you or that applies specifically to a small business, what AI technology would you recommend to somebody? Oh my goodness. I can't pick one. I'm sorry, Jenna. I'm going to cheat. Like, go ahead. <laughs> I think, I think that when somebody's new to it, they just have to get onto ChatGPT because it just yep. has, it's just got so multi-purpose. But one of the ones that I do want to highlight that we haven't talked today is like chatbots. Um, mm -hmm. I think people have such a negative connotation around chatbots because historically they've been terrible. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they're getting better. So I think people should just kind of keep an eye on that. And the reason I make that comment is, you know, designers love you, but it seems like nobody answers their phones. <laughs> um, and I think it's because um, we're, you know, you guys are in such a passionate uh, design place. So it might be head down working on a design. It's disruptive to answer a call. Mm -hmm. um, being on a job site is preventative from answering a phone. But what I'm seeing in the alternative space, uh, a lot of service oriented, like um, uh, when, when people are on job sites, okay, mm -hmm. is that they're introducing these chatbots because what happens is that the consumer is looking for a quote or some insight. They're on your website. They're looking at your projects. But they're engaged and they want to talk to you now. And so you don't want to lose that opportunity to grab their information. They may not fill out your form. And, but if, if your chatbot says like, what questions do you have? And they might ask a question, it can capture their, uh, their name and number so that you can call them back when you you have the time. And so, um, keep an eye on them. Cause as they get better, I think that that's a huge opportunity specific to design. Yep. Okay. So just to recap, in case if somebody doesn't know what exactly the a chatbot is, this is something that you can enable on your website that basically is a little chat bubble in the corner where they can ask questions or collect leads if you don't want to make it very in depth with training it basically on the information that's on your website. You can just kind of say, hey, do you have a question? Leave a message and I'll get back to you later. But it's more like interactive than going to a lead form where they probably won't fill that out. Is that kind of correct yeah. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit more proactive versus passive and you you know you just address that it could be simplistic to start but then it might be trained over time to give some answers and to try to you know sell that person into like acquiring your services but um but at the very least start small and and uh, i think that would be a good opportunity okay do you have any recommendations for programs for that I do not. Okay. I do not. It's not something that we use currently, but like I said, yeah. they're improving and we're evaluating. Yeah. So give me okay. 30 days and maybe I will. Perfect. Because I've been researching and I haven't found one yet that I love, but just like you, I know that it's emerging and it is something that I've wanted to add to my website for a long time. And I've also kind of considered, can I just program one myself with ChatGPT um, and train that and then, you know, code it into my site, which I don't want to do, but... <laughs> Yeah. Let, let, well, let's, co let's collab on that a little bit. We'll exchange ideas and I'm sure we'll yeah. come up with something and then we can share back Perfect. to the community. So. Perfect. That's a great way to do it. All right, Crystal, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I love it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jenna. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks. it. Right, bye. bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the AI for Interior Designers podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and tune in next week for more AI tips for your design business. See you next time.